I read a good piece this morning um, in a newsletter called Cricket at Out by uh, one Sam Perry. I I assume you've heard of it. Mm, because Gideon Hay, Gideon Haig, and Pete. And oh, Peter Layla, Peter Lawler from the he used to write yeah, yeah, Australian. Yeah. And Sam is a big fan of at least Gideon. I assume he's a yeah. fan of Pete Lawler as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, so he wrote a really good piece in there this morning uh, talking about uh, Australia's selection dilemma. Oh, yeah. And, like, because you know how I sent you that thing uh, saying that Uzi was talking about, he doesn't think, he was suggesting that Smith go back to four, like. Mm, yeah. Um, You know, what, what Pez was talking about is, like, you can move head, and you can, and maybe that'll work. But, like, at some point in the next two years we are going to have to find solutions that aren't that aren't people already in the 11 because in the mm, next yeah. next i would imagine maybe not maybe i'm mistaken and i hope i am but i'm gonna hazard a guess that usman kawaja is retiring this year or oh, sorry yeah. uh, like next year yeah but like at the end of some i imagine he's got five tests for australia left in him yeah. essentially um you know maybe geez maybe he goes, maybe he plays through the ashes. He'd be fucking old if he was. Because he, he think he's 37 now. Yeah, I think either 36 or 37. And so mm. ashes next year, so he's going to be. <laughs> he's 37. He's He'd be 39 by the time the ashes finish. Because he's 37 <laughs> now. But yeah. he's, he'll turn 38 in December. Now he's I mean, playing well. Yeah. But and I suppose better cricketers have better like other cricketers have played long and pro- arguably cricketers with more demanding jobs. Jimmy Anderson obviously played on for a long time. Uh Stuart Broad, I want to say, retired at about 37. I think 38. Uh he's 38. Uh, he retired last year, though. So, yeah, he would have been 37 oh, yeah. when he retired. So, you know, Brody, obviously Brody and um, Anderson had harder, like more physically taxing jobs. It's harder mm-hmm. to bowl pace than it is to bat, or at least, you know what I mean, like on your back and stuff. Yeah. So maybe Usman can, maybe Uzi has another summer left in him. And if his eyes aren't going, I don't see why he can't. Mm-hmm. But Uzi has at best a year and a half left and like that is yeah. really fucking generous if Uzi plays on the next 18 months like that is shockingly he'll have played on and the problem is right if we move head up to one maybe mm-hmm. head gets a handful of tests he i mean he opened in india uh in the, the that in that test series where uh warner broke his hand um, mm-hmm. And he opens for the one-day side. But, like, he has, like, five tests of, like, experience. But if Uzi retires at the end of the summer after the India series, he has yeah. five tests of experience. And then maybe we're bringing in someone new to play alongside Head. Worst case, though, is that Head doesn't succeed and we have a totally new opening partnership with no Uzi because Uzi's retired and no yeah. Head because Head didn't do well in the position. And we're sitting there going, so we're trying to bring in two new guys at the same into that position at the same time as Steve Smith's going to be retiring. Because Steve Smith's probably... Uh, Steve Smith will maybe play through to... He won't play past, past the Ashes, I don't think. No. Especially with his form having been a little... You know, I don't speak ill of the college. Assume, but... You'd assume Smith would want to play for the next Ashes. But if he has a terrible summer against India, he might not. That's and... what I mean, right? It's like, how, is is Smith going to have the choice? Like, I think if Smith can play well, you let Smith play on as long as he can. And, like, I know yeah. they say, you know, class is permanent, form is temporary. And I'm pretty sympathetic to that. But Smith's eyes do seem like <laughs> they're going. Yeah. And if they are... Smith maybe gets the, the next again. The next Ashes is the latest that Smith plays on, as I see it. If even if he comes out and has a good summer, scores a couple hundreds, he's not playing past the next summer. I think the thing with Smith is he keeps coming out looking so good, and then he just does one stupid thing. Like 
in that first ODI game against England. He just he's bad. He's on like thirty six, I think he is. He just uh taps one straight to the bowler. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, and I think in some way it's because he like gets in his head a lot of the time. Like he 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 spends a clear. I mean, I don't want to talk about Steve Smith's fidgeting, but I'm gonna talk. Like I don't care. I think it's endearing, but like clearly he's a routine batter. He spends a lot of time in his head. He has to have things a very particular way, and like Manus is the same. But like Smith hmm. is really good, and but you know at, at best. Even if he gets himself out of his head, and you know he he played a good innings, uh, an all right innings, I think, uh, against England in the first ODI. Off the top of my head, it was okay. Yeah, yeah. he went out um pretty cheaply in the second one, but that was a good ball. Like it, a lot of deviation off the deck. It's it's playable, but you you have to be reading uh, like some really late late movement. Yeah. So. <sighs> I, I I don't know. Like I, I don't know what they're going to do this summer. If they move head to the open, maybe it works out. But like they might move him to the open, and it doesn't work out. And we're sitting there, go- sitting there going, "Okay, we need two new openers for a series against England." Yeah, that's well, great. And then, and then you've also got our bowlers are aging a bit. Hazel mm. keeps injuring himself, so he's probably not far from the end of his career. And you've got Stark. Well, How old's Stark now? Thirty. Stark's got thirty four. I want to say thirty four. <laughs> okay, that was a bit off then. Um. Um. No, but still, like he, Stark's thirty four. He'll be thirty five in January. By the end, by the end of the Ashes, he's about thirty six. Yeah. You know that's old for a bowler. Stark, and and Stark hasn't shown too much of a dip in form. I mean, he's expensive, like Stark has always been at times, but he can yeah. still like he hasn't been injuring himself long term. Um, Hazelwood though got through the summer un, un like without injury, mm. but that's the first whole summer Hazelwood had played in a while. Yeah, Cummins, C- Cummins isn't. Too, I think Cummins is about thirty, so I think he's got a bit of time left in him. But you know, Lion. Um, Patrick, well, Lion said he wants to play through to the next Ashes, uh, at least. Not just the next Ashes. He wants to play through to the next oh, Ashes in England. Yeah, that's right. Because he'll be, what, 39 by then. Which he could still do. Like, he's such a good bowler still. And doesn't, like, as you're saying, it doesn't take as much out of you to bowl spin as it does steaming in at full pace. Yeah, so, like, Lion can maybe play on. And with, how, how do you put it? I do not think we have the spinning options to be moving line out of the test team before he's ready to retire. <laughs> you know, obviously you've got Todd Murphy who had a bit of a good run in um in India, although I heard I didn't watch much domestic cricket, but I heard his domestic figures weren't brilliant last summer. Um you have Kuhneman who spins the other way and same kind of thing. And and so it's like you, you know <laughs> We're not swimming in spinning options. Bowling, okay, pace, we've got some. Stark, we can, you know, we bring in Morris at some point for Stark. You know, you've mm-hmm. got, like, Jai Richardson or someone could maybe come in for Hazelwood. But, like, we we have a problem where we have a lot of ageing players and even the younger players within the side, like, we don't actually... Travis Head's 30. Yeah. Um. Bloody... Marnus Labashane's 30. Yeah. He's, like, the, the young guys in our team... And within the last, you know, I don't want to say the last five years of their career, like that's some really short time. They've probably still gotten away ashes away. Like they've probably still gotten away ashes in them. But yeah. these are guys that are heading towards the end of their career and you're not looking at the domestic stocks, I don't think at the moment, and going, okay, yeah, within the next five years, we have a number three, a number one, a number four, a number five, uh, one of the best bowlers in the world and a spinner and... Yeah, you know, I, I don't think we have them. And I suppose that's looking a little too far out. Well, like I'm looking at the next five years, but even in the short term, you know, someone, I, Pez brought this up in his article where it was like, um, you know, Warney and McGrath retired at the same time. We're all like, we're not going to do that again. But that was the second, they'd already said that before where two multiple players had retired at the same time and we're going to do the same thing again. Yeah. We're not phasing these players out. We keep finding solutions within the team. Like with, um, 
you know, last summer, oh, we're going to move Smith up. And I was supportive of Smith opening, sure. But, like, we're finding solutions within the team that is ageing. Yeah. We have, what, one young player? Cam Green's the only guy on that side that's... Is he the only guy on that side that's under 30? I'd probably, I'd say so, yeah. Um, well, Uz obviously isn't. Marsh isn't. Smith isn't. Marnus isn't. Head isn't. Maybe Carey. Maybe Carey is under... 30, but then obviously Lyon, um, Cummins, Hazelwood, and Stark aren't. Terry is 33. <laughs> so we have one player under 30 in that side, Carey. You know, 33, again, we, we're, we're looking for a new wicketkeeper in the next three, four years. <laughs> and, and this is going to happen within the space. I'm sure the space we've world. got wicketkeepers out there like Josh Inglis. I don't know about how he goes in test matches, but he seems to be a good a very good batsman, as well yeah. as the gloves. Yeah, so, like, I, I suppose what I'm not trying to say is that, like, we have no options, but, like, yeah, we have a big selection dilemma where in the next five years, five, in five years' time, we probably have one player left in the side. Maybe two or three if yeah. Car- if um Marnus and Head both play on, which they could, you know, both are good enough batters to, but... Hmm. So I read that this morning and I thought I've got to bring that up. Yes, but we have just won two meaningless ODIs against England. <laughs> so, that, yeah. that it's basically the ashes but for ODIs. There's five of them. How good is that? Yep. I uh I watched heaps of them. <laughs> I watched a solid I watched like ten overs of the one the other night. I watched about an hour of the first one. Oh yeah, and, and then I didn't watch any of the second one. Nice, that's that's yeah. It looked it, yeah. It was, I it was assume okay. the third one would be tonight. Yes. Um, that sounds about right, but I don't know the answer. As I was saying, last summer was a great chance for us to test out yeah. some options, mm-hmm. and we just stuck with the same team in like really pointless games. Like, if you, oh, I don't know. If you, if you try someone and it doesn't work against Pakistan or West Indies, I, I don't know. I just think it doesn't matter that much. Whereas, like, now we're coming up against India and we're, maybe we stick with the same team again, but we're, it's coming to a time where we are going to be forced to try out some just new players that have no experience. Mm-hmm. We, we will almost certainly be forced to... I uh, Look... If we, I, I would almost, I'd put money on the fact that we'll end up playing the same team. My 11 off the top of my head is going to be, it'll be head opening with Kwaj. And I don't hate that. Although there's a big difference between opening the batting because head's a lot better against pace than spin in India. And that's the only time they're really involving pace. And like opening the batting against, uh, you know, Bumrah. <laughs> and Siraj and Shami on a, on on a deck like with a bit of bounce in it, like um you know uh what is it, Optus Stadium under lights with the pink ball. Admittedly, Adelaide's going to be a bit of a road, but then coming up to the Gabba, oh yeah, great, absolute green seamer, fucking doing a mile, and it's going to be like, oh, we're going to try head out. He's he's used to batting on a dead ball that's been played on for eighty something overs. Oh, we're going to try it now. You know, it, it's. And the other thing I'm not liking is we we have I mean I guess you just move maybe you do just move Marsh into five or Cam Green maybe Green would play five Marsh should stay at six I'm I don't know guessing. if I like that because the issue I have is Minus and Smith very good batsmen right but they slow mm-hmm. the run rate down usually unless oh, they yeah. unless they get going then they start bringing it up but. The thing I like about Head coming in at five is you've had a few overs of, or however long, of Smith and Minus. So mm, that's yeah, slow yeah, down yeah. the run rate. And then you've got Head to come in, and he just he just puts the pressure back on bowlers. And mm-hmm. if he if he's opening, I don't know. I don't know. It's I don't think it's a good idea. But yeah. yeah. And you think about this. Let's say let's say there's a world where Head goes early. Right, because that's going to happen eventually, right? You're not always going to score. But like, even if he succeeds, he goes early, right? Manus comes on to bat with Usman. 
Now, one of those two goes, mm -hmm. and then Smith comes on. Then one of those two goes, then Cam Green comes on. And then finally, once one of those two goes, finally, after, you know, an hour where we've scored three runs, <laughs> finally, <Yeah. laughs> Marsh comes on. He's your next hitter after that. And, and, you know, but the thing is, you can't really move. I, I feel bad moving Green out too far because he scored 170-something red in, in New Zealand. You I know, think... at, at number four. It might have been in the Patreon episode I was listening to, but Tezra actually made a good point about, um, he, well, he didn't say it directly, but he was implying that he doesn't think it's a good idea for Smith to move, uh, to move Smith back into four because he's mm. aging a bit now, and you might as well keep him up where he's where he is. And I don't know whether you want to. I think I think moving head isn't a good idea. That's my thoughts. I I think you have to do one of th two things with with head. Oh, sorry, with um with Smith. You either you either keep him at the open or you have to drop him down past four. Like play him at. I'm not saying I I necessarily think playing him at five is the best option in the world because you play him at five, and you still got the same problem where if it's head that goes out, you've still got this run of slow batters. But yeah, Smith. Might if I mean it depends how we're selecting teams, right? Are we selecting teams based on merit, or are we selecting teams, you know, based on this idea of who deserves a spot? I think it's always a bit of both, right? You know, you're always selecting teams in like with consideration of how good these players have been at points in the past, and that's fair. I get it. You know, Smith is such a good player that you know I don't want to say he's earned the right to retire when he wants, but you know, you play as well. You if you're the best batter since Bradman, you kind of earned the right to retire when you want, hmm. but. Can we really? I, I didn't see his domestic, uh, like his county figures, so I don't know if he played much county at all. I heard that they were. Um, I heard a few of the players were brought back from county early. I know Nathan Lyon was. Um, so maybe he, maybe did really well in county. But are we really going to move him back to four based on a lean couple of years? I mean, he's what he scored that. He scored a century against uh, India in the Test Championship, didn't he? Smith? Yeah. I've actually got no idea. That's, that's gone too far back now. <laughs> Mate, you are not a real cricket enjoyer. Uh, WTC final 2023. I want to say he did one in the first innings, but I could be wrong. He did. He did. He got 121. Oh, fuck. I'm shocked I remember that. I'm actually really, I don't mean to like, you know, jerk myself off on camera, but fuck, that is not a bad stat to pull out of my ass. <laughs> okay. Now that was a pitch that wasn't doing a bunch, but that was against India. Um, You know, so he scored runs in the last, well, not even 12 months, but he scored runs in the last eight well, months. So, well, I mean, he did get that 90 against West Indies, which is a really annoying because... Um, what he what he did for the all of the tests he uh, he opened, wait. Oh yeah 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 yeah. He he must have only opened two tests, right? Yeah, Adelaide then Sydney. Oh okay. No, Adela Adelaide then um Brisbane, because um, War Warner opened the first three. Yeah yeah yeah. Okay, so he he's only had four innings, mm -hmm. and realistically. I don't think there was one inning where he came out and were like, oh, this is shocking. I think he looked good for most of them, but the issue was yeah. he's getting stuck in his head and he's just doing, yeah. playing stupid shots. But then he yep. comes out in the last innings and just grinds out a 90. Also, that was I, a 90 with some, like, I don't know if you remember that shot out of his lap. It wasn't as good as the David Warner one, but he played this, like, absolutely stinking... Um, the scoop shot and it's like mate where's this been you know because and you know in adelaide he scored oh geez on i want to say he scored about 12 and like 30 something but i don't know that um let, let me have a look um we uh australia versus pakistan adelaide 2023 yeah. Um... Oh no, it was fucking. There's the Windies. 
Um, oh, come on. Come on, come on. Oh, so he scored 12 in the first innings. And... Not oh, he only that. scored 11 in the second innings. Okay, I scored... Yeah, but that's just... That's because they were chasing... They were 26. Chasing. Yeah. So, you can't knock him for that. I honestly thought he didn't look terrible in the first innings and kind of got out to a good ball. Now, um... Um... Uh, uh, Brisbane. I'm going to have to look up the Brisbane test, even though that was that this year. I um, scorecard Australia first. He scored six and that 90, what was it 94 or something? 91. And he looked all right in music. It's not like it, it's tough because it's kind of not bad enough to not bad enough to like have to drop him. I don't think. But not good enough that you're like, okay, Smith's an opener. Mm. And not doesn't fill me with enough confidence that I really want to move him back to four. I think, and that's I think the big thing for me is like he still had these times where he was getting in his head. It wasn't like he was playing like a very fleet, free flowing style of cricket. It was he would still get in his head where he was, you know, backed up against the crease and he'd constantly be um like he'd constantly be, um, you know, blocking shots and, you know, playing dot balls and that kind of thing. It's like, it's worrying. Like, I, I don't know what they do. If it was me, I, I genuinely don't know. I suppose Renshaw had that really good score against Pakistan in the PM's 11. Renshaw is not getting a go again, surely. Um, he Renshaw was the one that they brought back into the side, wasn't it? They, they, I think. Yeah, that is true. Actually, he's in. He's in the extended squad. He um, just did nothing not... when he. He just did nothing when he played in Australia, did he? He, oh, he scored. I think he had like one big score uh, in Sydney in like 2017 or something. It was like 170. I want to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ren, uh, fuck, I'm gonna have to look that up. Renshaw biggest. <laughs> Score SCG. Um, oh, oh, what did I say? 170 something? Yeah. 184. Fucking hell. <laughs> oh, I'm, mate, we, mate, you are on it today. You, you better be recording because I'm not getting any of these a second time <laughs> <laughs> but no so he scored a big total then but he has um pissed away a few chances nationally and it like at times it's like is he re- is he just a really good state cricketer that isn't quite ready for you know to to play at the level kind of like honestly kind of like Cameron Bancroft is <laughs> and, and surely yeah. and Bancroft I mean, some people are going to want him. He is not the solution to our problem because Bancroft isn't young. At least Renshaw is about 28. I want to say he was 27 last summer. Um, really? Is Renshaw that young? Yeah, he's 28. So he's fairly young. Bancroft, mm-hmm. I want to say, is about 30, oh, 33, 32, 33. Yeah, I think Cam Bancroft 31. is getting... Oh, he's a little, little younger than I thought, but he'll be 32 at the end of the year. So he's not young. And like you feel, you feel a bit bad for Bancroft. And I know a lot of people. There's a lot of opinions about Cameron Bancroft and his treatment by uh, the ACB. And frankly, I don't, I don't want to get into any of that because <laughs> actually, that'd be good for views. You know, Cameron Bancroft, <laughs> fucking, you know, breaking news. <laughs> Almost vomited at the team sheet. You know that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so oh mate they they've got to do something uh the his the but the track record of this squad i think and the way it's been coached under um mcdonald i think is probably the head gets moved up they they really want to find solutions within the test within the side rather than without it they don't like bringing new talent and maybe maybe in some ways that works because they have a really good connection between each other because you know like there's a lot of trust between them there you know but at the same time, it's like mm. at some point, in, like these guys are 
of an age demographic of about four years of each other. And we're starting to get to the point where the guys at the top of that have to go. Uh, it really yeah. have no choice. We saw that with David Warner. I mean, look at how much leeway David Warner got. David Warner scored 200 in, in one test and rode on that for a year. He was in England and people were going, is David Warner going to be good enough? And he's like, well, I scored a 200, you know, this year. And okay, it was good. It was gritty. I'll give it to him. But then he retired hurt, came out first ball the next day and was bowled out. <laughs> okay. I also I also stand by the fact it was totally because of that, because he barbecued Labashane and Labashane yeah. kept him there. If Labashane yeah. could have been um, selfish and gone, no, nah, you're gone, mate. But yeah, he wanted Labashane... to keep water out there. Yeah, there was a reason that Punner was on commentary saying, like, oh, he's absolutely barbecued ladder, ladder there. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and that got him through 12 months. And then he got to the home summer and he played, I'll give it to him, he played an all right home summer. He played well, uh, obviously, in the first innings of the uh, Perth test where he scored, oh, ah. Uh... <laughs> Come on, mate, go off the gas. Oh. I have... A number. I have some. I have a range of about twenty. I. It was a hundred. Yeah, it was at least a hundred, right? No, it was well over a hundred. I'm trying to think exactly how far over a hundred it was. It was in the one sixties or one seventies. I want to say. It might have been a lot lower than that. But for some reason, I have one sixties in my mind. Or was it like one forty three or something? Three hundred and sixty four. <laughs> Oh, fucking hell. And then 164 and then zero. Yeah, you're right. That, and that's the David Warner special. That is what you get with David Warner. There is nothing more, Dave, than, like, there, there is nothing more, Dave, Davey, than one huge score. And then, whoops, ducked. And it can happen in the same innings sometimes where he'll score 200, have to retire because he's been baking in Melbourne at 38 degree heat for eight hours, then comes out the next morning and goes out first ball. There's it nothing more. Like, it even happened while he was at the top of his game. Like, yeah. <laughs> it, was an, it was an issue he had for like the entirety of his career. Yeah, when, like, he, yeah, even when he scored that. Three o something against Pakistan, I want to say, a few years ago. Like that absolutely massive score he built. It's 335. Yeah, that's Is that the, the one, one you're talking about. Yeah. That, that's the one, right? Uh, so even when he scores that, um, you know, like even when he's at the top of his game, David Warner played a style of cricket. And, and I kind of get the, um, I kind of get it. Because, you know, Dave Warner and Head play a similar style of cricket. I I get it, you know. But, like, he was all or nothing, David Warner, all the time. And when it worked, David Warner was one of the best batters I've, I've seen. When he was on, he could just smack the ball around the park. And when he was off, no one was as bad as David Warner. <laughs> yeah, well, that was the interesting thing that we picked up was, was it the last game before he retired? Or even maybe it just might have been in those games against Pakistan, where he started to look aggressive again, and okay, he got some runs. <laughs> like, for like so many, however many years, he had been struggling to get runs, and he'd just been playing like not as aggressive as he can. And then he comes down and plays more aggressive against Pakistan, and he actually gets some runs. Like, like, he wasn't yeah. very aggressive in that away ashes, really, and he struggled to score anything over there. Yeah, no, I know I know exactly what you mean. And, and you saw, yeah, it was when he came home, that he was playing ridiculous shots against Pakistan. Like, I mean, there was that absolutely, like that, the real lap shot of the summer where he's hit it like, you know, 30 rows back out of his lap and he's ended up <laughs> on his ass. And it's just like, no one else can do that. When Davey Warner's on... Like when he was on, he was he was ridiculous, but just I don't know. I, I'm just a bit concerned, I suppose, that you know we let David Warner, we we let David Warner 
you know, have this really long, um, this really long retirement. He got like a whole summer goodbye and mm -hmm. whatever, but we're, we can't just keep letting players go out on their own terms. Oh, we'll just keep them in. We're never going to bring anyone new in. Oh, you know, I, I mean, like I said, I was supporting Steve Smith moving up, but Steve Smith moving up is a risk and it, I think, represents a broader issue of players don't get dropped. But, yeah, yeah I right. suppose that is, I think that's cricket. I think we've, <laughs> I, I'm shocked we managed to get, what, about 30 minutes of cricket in? Um, oh, we could keep going. Year. We could start talking about the rest day in the Sri Lanka test <laughs> for oh, an election. That's, oh. that's look, I, I don't know exactly how. Sri Lankan elections work, so I'm not going to sit here and make some comment well, about I had a quick read about it, and it was just because some players have to travel hundreds of kilometres, and the test match was um, planned before the election was announced, and I think they've got yeah. extra games and stuff, so it does make sense, but it's just funny to hear the test match has a rest day. If it already goes for long enough, let's just extend yeah. it a little okay. bit here. Yeah, and so uh, that that's what I was about to say. Is I, I'm not sure of the specifics of uh, whether or not, uh, you know, like if elections were were snap things or were, if they were um, like scheduled like they are in in the US in Queensland. But obviously, for the Australian federal elections, we um, you know they're they're announced essentially at the discretion of the prime minister. So I didn't know if that was the case. But geez, that's just bad timing, <laughs> and, and the fact that. I know a lot of people book flights and accommodation and that kind of thing, but geez, could you have moved the test a couple of days either way? Or well, yeah, I, I suppose know. depending on the timeline between. Yeah. Yeah, depending on. Because New Zealand had also just come from Afghanistan as well. <laughs> Which is another funny test because I didn't get a single day of play. Not a single ball was bowled. Oh, the um, yeah, yeah, I I saw that. That's a... Afghanistan had one test against New Zealand, and there wasn't a single ball ball. Um, I saw the other day that Afghanistan is banning men's cricket, men's cricket too. <laughs> yes, I saw that. Which um, like one sucks. I. Wait, are they banning like the national team or something? Yeah, I think so. Oh, what I thought it, I thought they were banning. Men for oh yeah, I thought it was just people playing it like just in the country, but that would make sense. It would go the whole way off. Well, I mean, like, okay, yeah, I suppose they can technically play. Uh, really, uh, I suppose they could technically um, play elsewhere, but it would seem very odd. I think if they were suddenly. It, like if they just weren't allowed to play in the country and were allowed to represent the country uh elsewhere. I will have a look though. Yeah, when I read it, I didn't it didn't click for me that it was like they were not letting the men's national team play. I thought it just meant like they were stopping like club cricket and stuff like that. But you you might be right. I it, at the very least, I believe um it will be banned within maybe yeah maybe it is only in in Af in Afghanistan but um apparently speaking of odds I was watching a Penguin Zero video and apparently they're making ad block like YouTube even worse for ad blockers and uh what are they doing so it's basically saying you can't even really use the internet at all without an ad blocker these days. Like, if you're even trying to read an article or anything, like, you just get completely smashed with ads. And YouTube is, YouTube is like, identifying ad blockers, and I think they give you, like, three videos or something to watch with their ads, and then they, I don't know if they really um, stop you from watching YouTube or what they do. That's, I mean, that's, that's good stuff. Uh, that's, that's great. I kind of get it, but at the same time, yeah, I, I was just reading that article. Um, it's so it's only a rumor; it's not confirmed yet. But I can't imagine how, if they're banning cricket in the country, you're going to be able to play cricket internationally. Because where is where are you going to practice? Mm. Yeah. I, I imagine the effect would be if they don't officially ban the men's national team, the men's national team just wouldn't be able to qualify for anything. They wouldn't play anything. Yeah. So they wouldn't be able to do anything. Which is, uh, I kind of. 
on the one hand, we have internationally a history of not playing cricket with countries that are under less than desirable regimes. The the most yeah. obvious one was apart, um, apartheid South Africa, where we didn't play cricket with them for a long time. Uh, and even like, and you know, there was punishment against players who went and played their own matches uh, over there. Hmm. And, and the fact that we, I find it a little odd. We said we didn't want to play cricket with them uh, in bilaterals, but we're still playing them in international competitions. And I get it because we have to play them, but at the same time, mm-hmm. they're still being allowed to play international competition. It's just, I don't know. It's really, it's, yeah, it's interesting, I suppose. <laughs> it's it's a decision. All right, I think that's all we can talk about with regards to cricket <laughs> in September. About 40 minutes and where, actually, we could talk about the domestic matches. Because no, I think it's time to move on. <laughs> I don't, oh, you, you saying, Jay, are you... Are you on the record saying you don't want to sit here and talk about uh, the one-day match that was played today where a guy took seven for 12? I haven't even seen that at all. I had a quick look at the score and I saw that Victoria won. Yeah, that was the match. A guy took seven for 12, which are, th- those, that's pretty good figures, actually. <laughs> I'd, I'd like that. <laughs> yeah. I have, I've I've bowled was seven, going like... If I bowled seven for 12 in a cricket game, which I've never played um i think i'd be pretty happy with myself yeah i suppose i'd be the opposite of unhappy (laughs) was it seven wickets in a row too surely not right surely not because it's peter siddle Douglas o'neill sam elliott 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 peter siddle Oh, no, so I thought you meant, like, did he take seven wickets in seven balls? Like, Oh, no, no, oh, no. Yeah, no, he must have. Oh, he must, must have roughly. Uh, you'd have to look. Um, yeah, I believe it would be, yeah, seven in a row. That's, man, that is a lot of, that, that's, in, okay, that, see, that is even more impressive. Uh, I, I, you got to give some credit. Speaking of giving credit, how about the Brisbane Lions, mate? <laughs> that was I'll I'll give it to you. That was a really good that was a really good match. That was one of the best matches I've seen in my life. That was shockingly good. All right. I was scared coming into a prelim against Geelong, given that the last time we beat Geelong in Melbourne was in a prelim in two thousand and four. Or at the MTG anyway. I think it was in Melbourne. Um mm-hmm. And also, given that Lions scraped over the line against GWS, they had no right to win that game, really. Coming into a game against Geelong, I don't know. I I did not expect it at all. And then I was also scared because the first quarter, well, at least half of the first quarter was all Geelong. And if they had put away some chances then, I think there's no coming back for Rizman, but Rizman were just pretty lucky that Geelong didn't take their chances in their, whatever it was, 10 minutes of dominance mm-hmm. they had at the first at the start of the first quarter. Yeah. It was, yeah, that, it was like, it was really good, you know. Obviously, the, the Lions were down, what was it, about 20-something points at one point, about, about 24, 25 points. Uh, managing to come back it was really impressive. Their, their pressure looked good around the ground. They... I, I think they'll win the flag. I, I, I think they'll beat Sydney. Yeah. Um, I was shocked we managed to keep up with Geelong for the entire game. Like, we had mm. that we had that bad start, but after that, we pretty much kept up with them for most of the game. There was points in the game where we slipped behind a bit, but for most of the game, we were staying up with them. And I don't know, it just... I was just not expecting to see it at all. And if Swans... Surely it would be Swans, right? This is... Yeah. Other than the Carlton game, this is the first time in the finals I've been... I've thought we should hopefully win. But, like... I don't know. It's... Surely it would be Swans. 
I, I, I don't think so. I, I think I, I, yeah, I can't, I, I don't think the Swans win. I think some people are going to point to, um, some people are going to point to the pretty dreadful record that, that, um, Lions Longmire has do. in uh okay. Longmire yeah. has in uh grand finals. I think he's lost six of them. Oh shit. So, so some might point out that I, I'm not gonna read too much into that. Uh what I do think is just Brisbane are good, and I don't think Sydney have been playing that well. I mean, obviously they played pretty well against Port, but they should have lost to the Giants, and it required a huge match from Heaney. The big question overall will be um the, the big word, I suppose, would be whether or not. Pepsi. I think it's if how well Cam Rayner plays and how early. <laughs> I because Cam Rayner can when he's on. I think he's your most. I think Cam Rayner is maybe your most important player because Lockie Neal is always on. Cam Rayner when he's on is a freak. But when well, he's had a pretty good game as well. And no McInerney. That one's going to hurt. Mm. You know, you'll play presumably Fort um, and Danaher will back up the ruck, but McInerney is quite good and you're, you know... Although you're be playing... we, played, we played without him in the second half against Geelong. But you're not playing against Brody Grundy, who was an all-Australian ruck. Okay, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Like that's all I that's all I mean, right? Is that you know, I I suppose the big thing for me is that it yeah. I like how I mean it, it all depends on yeah, Rainer, I think, and Neil and how how do you how the ball comes out of the middle. No McInerney is going to hurt, so you assume that you might get beaten. Um, that you know you might get beaten in the ruck, but yeah, if that if they can if that then means that Heaney uh, is able to do a lot of work, um, and that you're able to win centre bounce clearances, I think that could hurt you, hurt you guys. Um, but yeah, I'd be. I, I mm, it'll be I, I think it'll be good at least I think we haven't had good a bunch of good grand finals we we had um we obviously had a good one last year but mm. um you know but like before that we've had some pretty horrific grand finals I think at the least you'd say that this one should be close. Brisbane are playing pretty well at the moment and Sydney aren't. Sydney, you know, a, a few weeks ago, you you think, yeah, Sydney are going to tear you apart. Or Sydney, like, you know, a few months ago, they're going to tear you apart. But a, as it stands, I, I think you could. It also uh, just think... depends on our kicking, which has been a bit straighter. Like, it was pretty good against Geelong. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that was that was one thing that you had going for. You actually kicked really well. Um, you know, historically well, even. You you uh generally don't kick that well in the slightest. Um <laughs> uh, you know, although at one point it, it wasn't brilliant, but you know, you you really you, you really did manage to kick really well. Uh so I think I think, yeah, my, my tip would be you guys to win it. I think it's an, I think I've said this before, it's the nat natural trajectory of the last three years was for you to make a prelim and lose, make a prelim and win, lose the grand final, make a grand final and win. I think, you know, and you can't bet on that kind of thing, but the way Fagan has got this team going, I, I think, um, yeah, I, I think. You know, with all that in mind, I, 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 some it just feels right for me. Mm. 
Um, so just give me a sec. I gotta say. Right, so what, we're approaching an hour in, and we haven't even started talking about any Premier League or any other. All right, I suppose we do the Premier League next because that'll be the longer one. Or do we just get NRL out of the way? I don't think there's yeah, too I much just to talk could... about from the weekend. I I barely watched either of the matches. So not Reece, really. Reece has pretty much just smashed Manly and then what happened in the other game? Um, oh, the, um, yeah, the Cowboys lost after coming back. I want to say, like, mm-hmm. didn't they lose by six Ish. points or something? Lost by eight, 26 18. Um, Oh, and sorry. and Sharks also had two tries disallowed. So before Cowboys started their comeback, it could have been well and truly out of the out of reach if Sharks had scored those two tries, which both got overturned. But I don't know, pretty much what you expected. I don't know, maybe some people were expecting Sharks to win. Actually, probably quite a lot. But I think Sharks and Sydney were going to be too good for them. Yeah, I I don't think I can really add anything to that, honestly. Like, I think you've covered it pretty well there. I think what we're headed for is quite clearly a Storm Panthers grand final, right? Like, that's that's what we're heading towards. I, I think, you know... I with, mean, Roosters... With the exception of... Roosters are playing pretty well, but I just don't see them beating Storm. Like, especially in Melbourne, they don't have a very good record, and it just, it just doesn't... It just seems like it's destined for Storm versus Panthers. Yeah, I, I, I think that's it's just kind of where we've been for weeks, right? The, these are clearly the two best teams. The Sharks were kept in the competition primarily because of an early season run of form and were, you know, broke a seven, a six or seven game losing streak in finals, you know, yeah. uh, to, to finally win one. I mean, they had to eventually. You can't lose them forever. So, yeah. And they tried their best know, to lose it as well. Oh, don't they? The, the Sharks know how to lose finals. I'll give them that. <laughs> um, so they did that. And, you know, I just, I can't see it going any other way. I've said this before. I've, you know, given my opinions about who's going to win the grand final this year. Because one's, you know, because one, like there's, you know, this Nathan Cleary guy who's apparently pretty good. It's, you know, just kind of, I don't know. I think I'm pretty confident in saying the, the the storm and, and the and and Penrith win this weekend. Yeah, that's about it for me, really. Yeah, I, I just got to send a message real quick. Sorry, just a quick email, as the kids say. <laughs> I think the kids are more likely to be saying message. I mean, yeah, message rather than an email, right? No, no, that's. Uh, that's terrible stuff, mate. All right, yeah, we're good. Uh, yeah, I suppose we could talk about. Um, I suppose we could talk about the prem. Uh, I haven't yet watched uh, any of the games over the weekend. Tonight, I have to watch two because I want to watch the City Arsenal game, oh, and I have to watch the United game. So that's going to be fun. I'm going to be up nice and late watching those. So I'll probably. Put this on, put them on straight after this finishes. So maybe at like 6 6 40. And gee, that's going to take a while. I don't know how I feel about that first Arsenal goal. I mean, actually, I don't. I won't spoil it. No, go on. I... Okay. Well, anyway, so basically, it's a free kick, right? At the halfway line. And the ref is talking to an Arsenal player and it, and 
Kyle Walker from Man City. Mm-hmm. And Man City's running back to position, right? And the, and the ref has allowed them to take the free kick early. So he's not ready to defend. And the ball goes straight to the player that he's marking. The player he's marking runs towards the box, cuts it back, and then they score. I don't know. Nice. I think, I think in most other ref, most most other refs are going, all right, hold up. Since I've just been talking to this player, we'll let them all get set before we take take this free kick on. Oh, and nice. I just don't think Arsenal are scoring that, to be honest. Yeah, then, I mean, I, I can't say anything about it having not watched it. Um, those stats are shocking. The the fact that with that many, sh- like that kind of domination and Arsenal got off pretty lucky. It sounded like Arsenal were have, we had nine players in the box fending. Oh, fuck. They had four shots. So I think they all came in the first half. I haven't watched the game, obviously. I didn't watch the game. Um, and then just sat like- back. It sounds like after they got a red card, they sat back, which is such a like they are that's not what you want to be doing against Man City. And to me, that seems pretty I don't know, like that seems pretty soft from a team that wants to win the league. Like to 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 get one player red carded and then completely sit back. I don't know. They're very lucky Man City didn't put some chances away. Well, because like you're just letting if all you do is sit back. You're letting City press, right? City are going to press no matter what. And so all you're going to do is like, okay, we're not going to play through it. We're not going to play out the back. We're not going to try and play with possession. We are just going to defend all game and hope that Haaland can't, you know, pull off some magic again. I mean, like, what yeah. are you doing? You can't play like that against City. To Against I City, think, you actually have to. I think maybe if Arsenal play... No normal play style, City probably does score like and win. But I think sitting back like that is very soft from a team that wants to win the Prem this year. Yeah. Yeah, you can't. You can't really like be you have to be playing to win matches. And that's clear obviously if that's what they were doing. If that if that's how they were playing, if they were just sitting sitting right back, then you know, that's not really what they, they were doing. They weren't, you know, playing to win. It was like, okay, we've copped a card and we are going to hang on for our lives. <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, um, I don't know, I, I I wouldn't be hugely... Yeah, it, it, like you said, it's pretty soft. And to me, maybe, just maybe, oh, I don't want to be too, too presumptuous. It, I think, kind of supports the idea that the competitor this year is a different red team that comes from a little bit further north. Man United? No. God, no, it's not Man United. <laughs> no, I think, like, Paul, I, I think Liverpool is still... I, I think they could be a bigger threat this year. Yeah. Mm, yes. It's... They've started off that season very well. It just comes... Like, they've only conceded one goal. That's insane, but... Yeah, it's a, it just comes down to whether they can keep it going for the whole season, which maybe they can. Maybe. Maybe they maybe will it's, um, It could be... Um, it could obviously be a new, uh, like, new coach, new manager bump. Like, it's possible that they're just playing really well under a new manager where all their players are motivated. But, the, like, I think the, the fact that... This is basically the this is basically the same squad they've had. This isn't like some new squad where there's been a lot of turnover with a new manager. They've managed to keep things really consistent. Um yeah. and for me, that that's positive signs. I mean, yeah, it was a shock loss against Forest. And you sh- okay, like I'm usually willing to give teams some credit that like, oh, you can lose a game here and there. It's not the end of the world. Probably not to Forest. Forest isn't really a, a team you're going. You can lose to. I know Forest are terrible, know. but Forest is like pretty decent this year. Their defense has been pretty solid. But I don't know. Maybe Liverpool should have won. I think they had their fair share of opportunities in that game. Yeah, uh, I suppose that's uh, like Forest primarily. is sitting in eight at the moment. Like. 
They haven't lost a game yet. Okay, we're... We're what? Four match days in? Five, mate. Come oh, on. sorry. Sorry, I forgot that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it is too. I'm a silly Billy, as the kids might say. I, I don't know why I keep saying that. I, I say that for everything. <laughs> and, like, I'm kids. I'm 21. I'm still young, aren't I? I'm I'm 21 and go to work every day. I'm still young. Yeah. Um. All right, let me have a look. i got to look at some results because I saw a couple of them. Uh, were there any shockers in there? Uh, I, I didn't expect Hammers to lose by that much to Chelsea, I think. Yeah, uh, they were pretty right. poor. They were pretty poor. Hammers or Chelsea? Uh, the Hammers. Apart yeah, well, from that... Well, there wasn't too much shocking that happened this weekend. Not really. Oh, wow. I mean, they had... You, you say that, but they had shots, beat you on target, had possession. Yeah, yeah. What I mean is that the team was oh, all like over the place starting the game off. That's why we scored oh, two early okay, goals. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I oh, actually... Well, yeah, so I didn't tip that. I tipped a draw uh, there. Yeah, so did I. Um, I got the Spurs game. Right. Although that was, yeah, against Brentford, you kind of expect that. Although they really, Spurs have been a little wasteful. So to win 3 1 is, I probably wouldn't have tipped that. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually got the uh, Southampton Ipswich draw right too. Really? Yeah. I think I tipped Ipswich to win. Really? Yeah, I tipped Ipswich to win. And unfortunately, Leicester let me down, man. Yeah, Everton well, I have got Leicester points. As well. Um, Liverpool, unsurprising. Villa, unsurprising. Newcastle, finally, finally got caught out. I tipped Newcastle, mm. but I think it was about. I tipped Fulham. Let's go. I knew it was coming. It like yeah, uh, did the same thing happen as per? Oh my fucking god! I haven't looked at the stats. What are they saying? No. Oh mate, okay. Possession. Newcastle dominated sixty one percent. Yeah. But they had six less shots on target. Oh, 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 wow. God damn. That's how do you have that much possession and do nothing going forward? Well, 16 shots isn't really nothing, but to have 22 shots against you. Yeah, that's what I mean, though. Like, okay, yeah, not do nothing, but how do you have that much possession and concede that many shots? What is going Newcastle are really weird this year. Well, I don't think, I don't think they're that good, really. I think they're getting pretty, I mean, obviously they weren't lucky here, but they've been getting pretty lucky. Hmm. With that game, game against Spurs is like Victor and um Yeah, the game say? against like it was it was like a case in point. It was the embodiment of their problem yeah. this year. The game against Spurs was the same. Um was that the game opening match against uh Southampton, I want to say. Yeah. That is that was just because Southampton were super wasteful, like But I mean, so was Spurs. That, that's what I mean, right? Is you can't let you you can't keep yeah. letting teams have that many shots, um, and, and still expect to win. I mean, the I suppose the thing they had going for them here was that they at least you know for for the first time you know they uh, actually dominated possession. And um, last week I bloody tipped Wolves to win, and they were winning until the seventy fifth minute. Very frustrating against Newcastle for Newcastle. Also, Newcastle scored in that twice one. in the last fifteen minutes. Yeah, that's Who's Newcastle shocking, got mate? this week. Man City. Mm. All right, they've got to drop points there, right? Surely. Um, the other frustrating one is Villa, because they're pretty much doing the same thing. Like 
They were down 2-0 against Everton. They were down again on the weekend against the Wolves. Um, what else? They beat Leicester 2-1. They beat West Ham 2-1. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I mean, I I obviously tipped Villa. I'm not, I'm not shocked. They won. I like. I think that's. I I, I mean, I I've said I think Villa are pretty good, obviously. But yeah. I, I there, there's not I, there's actually yeah there's not too much to talk about in the prem. Like it's all pretty. Yeah, there was no shockers this weekend, and having not watched the replays, I I can't say too much. As yeah, I suppose the the Brighton match was a little bit of a surprise. United against Palace was unfortunate, although uh, we dominated uh, we dominated stats. You know, smashed them in shots, beat them in shots on target, had a bunch of possession. Apparently, we were, apparently we were giving pretty good service too. We just were horrific like horrifically inefficient inside the box, which is, you know, a problem United's never had before. You know, United's Josh never said Josh said that Man United have the most missed big chances. They've got 17 missed cha- missed big chances from five games. Which is crazy. That sounds about right. I mean, off the top of my head, I haven't I didn't watch the Southampton game, but off the top of my head, there was two pretty bad ones. Um, against Brighton, uh, against Liverpool, we were we had some chances. Although Liverpool really did dominate us most of that game against Fulham, uh, we had a couple of big chances. So yeah, that that tracks. Um, that that makes about that makes sense. Like we just we find new and innovative ways to fuck up in inside the box. Like you know Xerxes coming along and touching a ball that's going in no matter what, and so it, you know the goal being offside to. You know, Garnacho missing in front. Rashford. Like, Garnacho it's... missed a really easy chance against... Was that against Fulham as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It right was the end. Yeah. yeah. That's the one I'm talking about. You know, he missed oh, yeah. an absolute sitter there. Uh, what was our lineup? Would we start? I heard uh, we didn't start Rashford. Yeah, and I was right. We didn't start Rashford. We played Garnacho on the left and that might have on the right. Been because of the midweek game, potentially. Yeah, oh, it wasn't anything big. It wasn't like a, it wasn't a dropping. But you know, I actually didn't even. I did watch the uh, Wednesday game. I think we won. I think we won seven nil. I want to say. Yeah. Against um, Barnsley. Oh, well, you know, I... Which is basically Barcelona. So it's a pretty good 7-0 win. Mate, look, I, you know, there's no team... <laughs> there's no there's no team I fear more than Barnsley, you know. The year starts and I say, I don't care about the Prem. I don't care about the <laughs> Europa League. I care about the Carabao Cup. And beating a team two division lower, I want to say that I think are um, oh no they're coming third. So they might only be two divisions lower. Like, yeah, it, it was surprising. Obviously, Garnacho got the hat trick there, which is what you want to see. Garnacho actually making um taking his chances of course i would prefer personally if that didn't come in the carabao cup and we could do that on the weekend or in the europa <laughs> league or against you know uh good sides and not you know not teams we're playing you know not not teams we've been seeded against because it's a you know bit of a silly competition mm-hmm. but you know we i suppose you just got to take what you can get you can't have your cake and eat it too, as they say. And, and yeah, so it's, we'll. It's a little bit crazy that um, you score seven midweek and none on the weekend, and considering like all of the chances you make and all the big chances. No, mate, that's United. 
that is United right there. Can you can you think of anything more United than you know playing well in games where it doesn't matter, and then playing well in a game where it does matter and taking no chances at all. Like yeah, well, it didn't really happen against Fulham, really. I think yeah, it exactly. Until the eighty-seventh like, minute, I want to say. Yeah, we didn't score until really late. And then we get an opportunity to put a second away. We had like other opportunities and, and we just bricked them. You know, it's. Yeah. I'm glad. I, I'm glad because I <laughs> I hate when you're playing and it's like, oh, we're winning easily <laughs> against this team that's worse than us. Oh, no. I, you know, I, I wake up and, and I go, okay. how can we make this more difficult? And that's what they did. And I. I can't complain if that's what they do, because that's that's United. 